is NDTV and you are watching NDTV Prime. I have to say it's a very different setting for me uh, to have a conversation with uh, Dr. Pavan Goenka. We've done this in studios and we've done this in uh, you know hotel business centers and sometimes even at car launches. But uh, New York City, that's a first. Uh, Pavan. New York City and Mahindra <laughs> Racing together. Both those topics I think become special and uh, thank you of course for making time. It's safe. Always, always a pleasure. It's, uh, it's a great reason for us to be here. Uh, I'm experiencing my first Formula E race and I know it's the first of this season for you. Formula E, I, I think this question has been asked before, but I'm going to ask it to you anyway. Now that you're three seasons in, uh, why, why are you, you here and why did you first get, take the decision to get here and also, you know, are you happy where you are? See, so, uh, decision to get here was multi-reason, uh, many reasons, several reasons. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> we were the people who decided that electric vehicles is the future in India and we got into it very early and we wanted to reinforce that. Uh, and we wanted to create more awareness of electric vehicles in India. The electric vehicles don't have to be boring, uh, uh, sort of dull looking vehicle. They can be very exciting like Formula One. Uh, and we thought nothing better than getting into this series, which was just starting at that time. Of course, there's apprehension whether it will take off or not, because they are something new, may work, may not work. Uh, and um, so, so that, was, that was the primary reason to kind of reinforce our drive towards electric vehicles. Second, I think uh, for Mahindra to develop a global brand, getting into uh, uh, sort of racing sports is one of the probably best ways of developing global Showcasing. brand and we couldn't get into Formula One. Uh, that was not aligned to our future direction, future strategy and uh, perhaps unaffordable also. And therefore we thought this would be a good uh, way to get in into a global uh, racing event and we did. And we are very happy with the way it has turned out, uh, both in terms of how the series has taken off with the kind of interest that we see in uh, viewership on TV, with the grandstands being always full, and overall uh, coverage that's happening in Formula E, and also the way Mahindra has done. We never expected that in, uh, in season three, we will be in top three teams, uh, and we're quite delighted that we are there in the top three team, at a budget which perhaps is lower than uh, most of the teams. That actually, you know, it's maybe lower than the other teams, but it's still several million dollars that, that you have is. invested. Um, it, it's still an investment, clearly, that you think is a good one. Uh, we think so. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, the, the, the three things that, that we look to do, the brand visibility globally, uh, the sort of visibility of electric vehicles, electric technology, and what it might do in terms of technology flow into our road electric vehicles, uh, all three together uh, certainly make it uh, uh, justifiable, worthwhile for us to spend that kind of money uh, for, for, for Formula I, I, I do believe that it does bring uh, little visibility for India also, it's not just about Mahindra. Uh, and you see Indian Oil uh, right in front as one of the sponsors uh, uh, with Mahindra. And I feel good that uh, uh, India is getting visibility uh, through it, but uh, we have to remain at least in top three uh, for uh, the interest to remain alive uh, and we'll have to work hard at it. As every year it's going to get more difficult uh, to remain in top three. And seeing the tricolor on the cars and on the drivers uh, here is, is fascinating, it's great. Um, the, the question has to be asked though that you know when you talk about Mahindra brand getting visibility, where is that taking you? Because is it about you know the name itself going on to let's say passenger cars which are going to be fully electric, which are going to be sold in these markets, or is it about awareness of you know where you come from as a technology player so that it's a B2B arrangement that you see helping your business going forward in terms of being a supplier of this technology or batteries? I, I don't others. think it's uh, so much about B2B visibility. Uh, in fact, B2B visibility, Mahindra has uh, quite good uh, in automotive side, uh, in IT side also, because of Tech Mahindra for IT and our, all the global suppliers being in India and Mahindra being a major customer for all the suppliers. So it's not so much about B2B. It's more about the <coughs> Mahindra brand being known uh, to the masses, to the consumers. Right? Uh, and as we bring in more products and more services, B2C services and products into various parts of the world, Having familiarity with the Mahindra brand uh, certainly helps. And especially getting association with something that 
everybody respects, that is electric mobility. You may not want to be an electric car, that's different, but uh, everybody will say that electric mobility is the right thing to do because it's environmentally uh, uh, clean. Uh, and, and inevitable. Uh, and and, 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 and yeah. inevitable, right? So therefore, association electric vehicle probably is a good brand association. And if we remain like uh, on the podium, and then uh, people will say, yes, here's a company that is coming in, competing with the best in the world in terms of the big names uh, in, 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 uh, in uh, automobile and doing well. And, and there has to be something in technology, there has to be something in our strategy, there has to be something in the way we understand how cars work. I'll tell you why I asked that question, Pavan, because uh, there was a little bit of, I, w I won't call it confusion, but uh, almost like a little bit of a doubt because this has always been the message from Mahindra. But when you did Gen Z, uh, it wasn't the Mahindra brand up front. So was that just, uh, let's say, an experiment to see how that could work out? Because it's a different target audience, surely. But when it comes to passenger vehicles, it'll always be Mahindra in front. Well, uh, if you recall, uh, going back to you get why I'm asking this. Yeah, but if you go back to 2002, and you were very much there on the day we launched uh, Scorpio. Yeah. Uh, we never called it Mahindra Scorpio. <laughs> we called it Scorpio by Mahindra. Yeah. There, because at that time in India, Mahindra brand could not have been associated with by a consumer with an SUV like a Scorpio, and would have been a dampener for Scorpio if we had put Mahindra first. And somewhere after three, four years later, we were able to put Mahindra first and then call it Mahindra Scorpio. Kind of same thing happening here because the brand is not known. Same thing applies to Gen Z where uh, the Mahindra brand is not that well known in, in US market right now. Though it's more than what many people think, but it's still not very well known. And we thought that it will be good to put the product name first in the front and have by Mahindra Association. And then at some point of time, we could reverse just like we did in Scorpio. So that worked for Scorpio, we try it again. Why can't it work again? All right, um, when it comes to this plan though, you know, you mentioned about how everybody, somewhere at the heart of it, knows that electric is the future. Uh, but today, especially in the US market, when you think electric, it, you also think two things. One, you have, you know, a sort of sexy brand like Tesla sitting, occupying mind space. And two, uh, of course, expensive and not for me. Uh, how, you, how are you going to overcome both these So our, our approach is totally uh, different, uh, in, a, in a different direction because we wanted to bring electric vehicles into India in a way that it becomes more of a mass market than a niche premium uh, segment. Uh, because the reason we want to do electric vehicle is because we think it is going to clean the environment, uh, which is very badly needed in India, <laughs> in all, all, all major cities. Uh, and that cannot happen unless you get five, seven, eight, ten percent of vehicles as electric vehicles. And therefore, to bring vehicle at the same price point in terms of per kilometer running as you will do with diesel or petrol was very important to us and therefore the direction that we've taken is very different that doesn't mean that we will not get into premium segments sometime in future but that's not our starting point and 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 basically what we need to do right now the whole focus is how do we make per kilometer cost of running electric vehicle less than a diesel or petrol yeah no but then when you say you'll get into other segments uh, are we to assume that's that's still on the UV side of things or it could be anything? Could be anything, uh, could be anything, but uh, <clears throat> uh, see, UVs don't mean less aerodynamic, UV does not necessarily mean higher weight, sure. right? So Especially if we today. design it right for electric vehicles, we could very easily have an electric uh, SUV, yeah. why not? No, but you're not restricting yourself by saying we'll s remain in the SUV space, is what I'm asking, uh, and not for India, for yes, other markets. Um, I think when it comes to electric vehicles, we probably have to step out of SUV uh, boundaries. Uh, uh, we still try and remain as SUV as possible because that's what we know how to do. Uh, but uh, we may have to step out. At what point do you see the big transformation happening though where this becomes, let's say, the, you know, the majority of your business, the majority of your portfolio? Uh, I know that the market needs to shift as well. but Some years away. But, Some years but you do see a point like that? like an inflection point where... See, if I was to believe, uh, if I was to believe the effort that is being put in by Government of India of looking at uh, 2032 and yeah. 100% electric fleet, uh, even if we believe that won't happen, uh, and we say 25% will be electric vehicle, 20% even, that's, that's a fairly major, that's a fairly major uh, impact it will have. And if it's 20%, I think a very large portfolio can become electric. I think the turning point would be when the <clears throat> aggregators such as Ola's and Ubers start saying that 100% of my portfolio will be electric vehicle. 
and there is no reason why it cannot be because what matters there is cost per kilometer and if we can bring the battery prices down not we but if the battery prices come down to a level where cost per kilometer can be lower than uh, diesel or petrol then it's going to take off like nobody's business but, but is the is that one requirement still uh, changeable batteries in the sense where you can remove and change quickly uh, or do you I think, think that's, that's not that's very hard to do in cars easier so to it's do not like we're waiting for that solution no no easier to do in three wheelers easier to do in buses uh, because they are chassis based sure. uh, and you can easily have slide it out come, but but cars the batteries have to go inside somewhere yeah. and to take it out is, is, is yeah. not safe i i don't expect a swappable battery to happen in cars but for three wheelers for buses uh, it's it's very likely and i think that's what is going to make it affordable uh, and the program that currently is being worked on by Niti Aayog on uh, having like a 50 kilometer run in buses from one terminal to other terminal and then swap the battery. It's a very um, good approach. It's practical. And if that works, then I think all the buses, uh, city buses, uh, can become electric. So just imagine that if all the aggregators use electric vehicles, if all the city buses become electric, what it will do to the environment? It just is going to be a tremendous, tremendous benefit to the environment. And you start selling 10, 20, 30,000 vehicles in a year, at least, uh, which, is a, which is a good number. Uh, and that will help to bring down the cost of everything. So it becomes, one has to get into a virtuous cycle. Uh, from, because cost will depend on volume, volume will depend on cost, uh, everything depends on infrastructure. Uh, all of these things uh, have to kind of come together.